It's almost time, friend, if you've gotten on here for for my one of my favorite things I do, Real Estate 101. I'm gonna start right at one o'clock. I've got a uh I've got a bad a bad reception where I'm at, so one o'clock. We'll get started. <clears throat> Kathleen, you're right down the road from me, friend. I mean, we could almost walk and meet each other. You're so close. So, um, hey, thank you for thank you for the likes. Thank you, everybody, getting on here. It is about time to get started. I do Real Estate 101 every single Wednesday at 1 o'clock. It does not matter where I'm at <clears throat> because I do want to become – the number one source for real estate content in Murfreesboro. I feel like I am. I really feel like I am the number one source for digital real estate uh, in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. So no matter where I'm at, I've got to continue to do this. And uh, today, uh, even though I'm at Seagrove Beach, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to wing more of this stuff. It has not been as planned or thought out as it normally is. And yesterday I was like, hey, super coach, you want to come in here? Spit out some wisdom, rest. I'm here with Coach Burt. If you don't, if any of my friends do not know Coach Burt, you should. If you're looking to improve your life, your business, your lifestyle. Hey, hey, fella. What's up? Hey, sit down with me. Join, join me for real estate one on one. I don't want to. I don't want to interrupt what you, you're doing. Do you want to steal a show? No. I do have a word to say to everybody though for, on, on here, and I've been teaching my team this today. It's about certainty and fear. It don't matter why a person has uncertainty when you're trying to sell them something. Too many people get defensive. Too many people uh, get combative. Here's what I'm telling my team. Whatever you got to do to help them get certain about something. And the way you help a person get more certainty is you give them more information. Okay? The way you, the way you help them. So if, they're, if you're trying to get through to a person you're trying to sell and they're not taking action, it's because they got one of two things. They got fear and they've got uncertainty. Okay, and that's what I've been talking about this week. It don't matter why they are uncertain. You need to take full responsibility for that and say, I need to continue to educate the, these people. I need to continue to make them feel comfortable because until they feel comfortable, they're not going to take action, guys. And I think that's a big, big lesson for a lot of people out there. There's people sitting on the fence with you. They're sitting on the fence for one reason. They got fear that there's going to be harm or danger to them in the future. They may not get their money back, may not get return on investment, may not get return on objective. So they're stalling on you, and until you overcome that uncertainty, it ain't happening. So, so don't take it personal. Just continue to educate. I was just on the phone with Eric White on my team. We're having a hard time getting through to a guy up in Pennsylvania. And, and for, he said, man, I've done everything. And I said, well, we haven't put it in a video. We haven't explained it to him. How can we help him get certain? Maybe he needs to hear it three or four different ways. Maybe we need to explain it better. Maybe somebody else needs to explain it. But until a person gets that, they're not going to take action, guys. Okay. Hey, thank you, buddy. Hey, you want to sit down? You, know, you got any questions for me? Well, what I'd like hey. to do is turn some lights on. Can you hey, see? Hey, get the light. Hey, get the energy in here. All right, so energy yesterday. Up. Get the energy up. Yesterday, I was riding around. It's a great place to ride your bike down here. If you've ever been to Seagrove, Seaside, Florida, it's a great area to, to ride around, think. And I didn't really know what I was going to talk about today, but I am committed to do the show every single Wednesday at 1 o'clock. So sometimes when you're on vacation, the uh, the creativity just doesn't come to you. So I was riding around. Every time me and Brittany come down here, I always toy with wanting to buy something down here. I, I want a house in this area because of, not just for me, I want it for, for Brittany, Nicholas, my mom, my friends. I want us to have a place to be able to come down to where I can share it. So it made me think about this, real estate investing. And I put the post out there yesterday. So today, it's on the three-year plan. That's right, baby. It's on the three-year plan. So one of the things I'm very passionate about is real estate investing. And uh, I have tinkered around for a long time on, on strategies where they were inconsistent. When, at one point in my life, I wanted to do one thing. And then at another time, I wanted to do something, something different. There was never a consistency there. I'm a very inconsistent person. As Brittany, that's one of my challenges. I am all over the place. Well, you can't be like that whenever you're a real estate investor or any type of investor. So you do have to you do have to come up with a plan 
that uh, you're going to execute and you move forward and you don't stop. But it all starts with a, uh, a commitment uh, to, to your plan. And again, like I was saying, I never did commit to one plan over the past year. I have gotten clarity on how I want to invest in real estate. And everybody out there can have their own unique plan on how they want to invest in real estate. I've, I just happen to have my own plan. And uh, my plan is I no longer want to buy smaller individual houses. I only want to buy bigger multifamily or commercial projects. Hey, birthday boy, what are you doing? The birthday boy here, Nicholas, he's 11 today. My plan is to buy bigger income producing properties. What, what does that look like? It could be either multifamily, it could be commercial, but I no longer want to put resources, money into a small project because it's whenever you save up that, uh, thank you, Michael, whenever you start, whatever you start investing in kind of defines your strategy. So, and again, I'm not saying one strategy is right, one strategy is wrong, but I wanted to get out of the single family uh, residential investment. I wanted to get into something bigger. And what I what I had to do was I had to first off you got to you got to make a commitment you're going to make more money. I had to make a commitment that I was going to do whatever it took to make more money. Then you've got to save money. You've got to develop a uh, a uh, a discipline that you, you don't chase after everything. You know, if, if you see something, your emotions can't allow you to spend that money. You gotta, you gotta remain patient. You gotta make money. You gotta make money. You gotta save money. And then once you find that deal, then you've gotta be ready. You've gotta have everything in place. You, first off, you gotta have a banker. And of course, Ronnie Martin with First Bank is my only banker. That's the only guy I use, the only guy I'm going to use because he knows everything about me. He knows my whole financial makeup. So I've got all these things in place. I know because of his teachings what it's going to take for me to be able to acquire. Uh, I'm doing the biggest project I've ever done, and it's probably going to take about two years, but it took me a long time to get in a position to be able to go out and do a, a project as big as it is. But Ronnie has taught me, okay, if you want to do this, this is where your income is going to have to be. This is where your debt needs to be. This is how much money down you're going to have to have. So I've, I've eliminated the idea of going after houses unless, unless, of course, it is something that I can buy and I can get in and get out of. So this moves me to what I talked about yesterday. Hey, when you're on vacation, I just have, I'm having a rum and Diet Coke during the middle of the day my energy drink to help me get through today. So yesterday I was talking about the formulas that it takes. Hey, Chris Kirkendall, how are you doing, old buddy? I'm not far from you if you still live in lower Alabama. Shane Ray, the big kahuna, my man, my AC man. Sit down on vacation home with a home equity line of credit. 10% down. Well, see, Michael, my it gets me back to off my discipline, I, I think I want one of these houses. One of my very, very, very best friends, I'm in his house right now, Scott Nagy. That's that's kind of what he does. Hey, we're, we're, hey, we're, we're in Seagrove Beach. Uh, what it does when you do that, Michael, I don't know if I want to get in that VRBO game because I see how hard Scott works on it and I see what happens to the houses. I'm not saying it doesn't work. I just don't know if that's what I want. I'm looking for more of what I'm looking for is 20% down type of projects. Um, and there's reasons why. I know some people are gonna say, well, what if you could put less money down? To me, I need that discipline. I need that structure where I shouldn't do something unless I'm putting 20% down. So, hey, let me ask you this. In your opinion, hey, everybody that's on here, what do you think the most in, the most important factor of buying real estate is? I can give you a hint. Most people are going to say it's where you buy. They're going to say you make all your money when you buy. And I've got a belief about that because I don't necessarily agree with that, what's most important. What I believe is the most important factor in, in real estate is number one, I think you gotta have cash flow coming in. And you've also gotta be in a position to where you can fade any type of storm. So what happens if uh, your rents 
don't come in or repairs have to happen. Do you have enough money set aside to where you, uh, where you can, um, make those, make those payments. I think you got to have cash flow. I think you've got to have cash set aside. So to me, it's not as important what I buy as long as it's cash flowing. Because I believe the number one most important thing about real estate is time. Give me time over the purchase price because you can go back and look. Real estate has gone up and down, but I don't think there's any time where you can see over decades where it's down lower. So what if it does go down? Another thing is I'm only buying things on either a 15 or 20 year note. My good buddy, Dan Alexander, works with uh, Ronnie Martin. Dan Alexander can always answer any of your questions about this. Dan has helped me uh, under have a better understanding with this as well. So my belief, it's not, <clears throat> I'm not saying it's not important what you pay for something because you can definitely overpay for things. The most important thing, whatever you pay for this and you're putting your 20% down, does it cash flow? You don't want to buy anything that does not cash flow. Michael Lush played college at, Dan Alexander played college ball? I didn't know that. So the most important thing to me is if you're looking at a deal, does it cash flow? And I'm not saying like barely breaking even. I'm talking about you got to factor in every single thing that could possibly go wrong, including, of course, your payment, your principal, your interest, your insurance, your vacancy, your repairs. You've got to factor in every single thing that could go wrong. <laughs> He watched you. <laughs> You've got to factor in every single thing that could go wrong. And then you still have to be certain that what you're buying will generate enough income for you to buy it. Because you're buying time. Think about it. If, if you were to buy a, hey, best friend, got, got Miss Natalie Bird in here with me now. So if you're buying real estate and you've got it on a 20-year, uh, 15 or, uh, okay, great cash flow, but also enjoyment, have a great CPA. Hey, hey, I'm kind of my own CPA, Jessica White. But um, I get I get a little distracted whenever I read the comments, but I, like, I actually like to read the comments more than I like to talk. I like to talk with people on here, so any questions that you've got. So for me, if you're looking at a deal and you know you're gonna have it paid for in 15 years, because first off, you've gotta have a, you've gotta have a belief, hey, Jessica Justice, you've gotta have a belief of, hey, I'm holding this for a long time. That's my belief. You may have a belief where you're not holding it very long, but I wanna hold real estate because I believe over time, real estate will, in, it will increase in value and you're gonna pay that debt down and it's gonna create the most amount of wealth. If you buy something, you flip it, you gotta start all over and do that, I think it's uh, first off the taxes will get you, like Jessica's talking about. If you hold up, if you hold real estate forever, you're never going to have to pay those taxes. There's other ways you can, uh, of course. There's all types of uh, tax strategies, but I'm not going to get into that because I really don't care. Here's all I care about: is can I buy this and can I hold this forever? Can I buy this piece of property and it and, uh, and I've got it forever? So condition matters. I'd rather pay over for something that's in great condition instead of paying market value for something that's in okay. I don't have a problem paying market value, even in the market that we're in, if I can cash flow it. And I know in 15 years it's going to be paid for, or 20 years it's going to be paid for. I have no problem. So if you buy something, even though you feel like you got a great deal on it, but what if it doesn't cash flow? What, what if you got a great deal because it doesn't, it doesn't produce enough revenue? I've also found that if you get a great deal, you're probably going to give a great deal whenever you go to sell it. So I would always buy something that's very marketable. Right now, me and my partner, Joy Richardson, the Richardson Group, we are, uh, we, we're, we're doing a commercial development. It's uh, right by the interstate, and this is something we're looking at right now. We, we could probably flip the land and double our money, but we're looking at it from a long-term investment strategy where we're gonna build 24,000 square foot of office buildings on it. And at, uh, at our, what we're figuring is we will cash flow and probably probably be able to pay this building all these buildings off within 12 years. So I'm I'm looking at buying real estate, holding real estate forever. But here's what I'm going to tell you: everybody 
uh, everybody out there can have their own unique strategy and make, make it work. As long as you know your strategy and you're committed to it, I'm not saying mine works the best. But what I have found is I'm very emotional and the more I give myself opportunities to get rid of something, I usually will make bad decisions. My worst decisions have come when I've bought things emotionally. Hey, Ella Grace, you having fun out there? Sorry, sorry, hey, the little Miss Burt's giving me <laughs> Nope, that's enough. So, hey, do we have any questions? Hey, Jason, da Jason Daniels. Dan, you're still here. Dan, what is your belief? Do you believe, I believe the most important thing when you're buying real estate is uh, cash flow. How long can you hold this baby? How long can you keep it? That's why you need a good banker because a good banker can identify the position that you're in. What good does it do you if you buy something and you've got a great deal on it? You don't have the necessary money. I've been in a position in the past where I got a great deal on something and if one thing goes wrong, either with that property or something else, I've got to get rid of it. I've had to do those liquidations before where I got a great deal on something. I, did, I wasn't in the proper position to overcome whatever came. And that was uh, the, uh, man, I'm down here at this retreat. Why didn't you come down here, Jason Daniels? Well, I, we're past the retreat, but me and Bert are still down here. But uh, Dan, Dan, I'm sure you have seen people where they bought a piece of property and they got a great deal on it and uh, something else happened. They didn't have enough money. They weren't bringing in enough money and they had to get rid of it. And they, they, they lost the whole deal. So your, the, the, your financial condition, you need to get your financial condition right before you start buying things. You don't want to have to give away your property because you can't afford something that went wrong. So uh, I don't know how much longer I got because we're in such a bad reception area. Whenever you buy real estate, I believe you buy it to hold Hey, dude, how, I know. I see your stuff everywhere, Jason. I know how busy you are. Man, I want to spend some time with you, Titan. Hang out with you. Your goal should be to put the banker out of business, pay down debt. I believe the same thing, Dan. I believe the longer you hold real estate, see, even if your real estate isn't necessarily going up in value, hey, baby, what are you, what are you doing? To be in the studio audience. You want to be in the studio? I got my girl. Hey, Brittany Renee in here with me. So even whenever you hold real estate and it does not, I'm, hey, I know I'm making these little graphs here, but if your real estate is not really going up, but you're paying it down, the way it's amortized, like over t uh, 15 or 20 years, you're paying it down every single, every single payment it's coming down. So really, you could buy a piece of real estate that never went up in value. And if you've got other people paying that rent, you could still have made a lot of money because the people living in there are paying you. They're paying your debt down for you. That's the beauty of real estate. The leverage to acquire, let's just say if you bought a million dollar building, you're putting $200,000 down. The other $800,000 is going to be paid by people using your property. Whether it's, uh, it's some type of rent, whether they live there. Hey, buddy, see you back there. Whether they live there or whether their office is there, they're paying down 80% or sometimes 75% uh, of your debt. So whenever people say, hey, it's all, everything is made off where you buy. I don't, I don't agree with that. I believe it's how long can you hold it? Because if you can hold it for a long period of time, it does not matter what you pay for it. And I'm using that term very loosely because if you pay double or triple what something is worth, which the banks won't let you do that because of the appraisals, don't I, I'm not I'm not the the price. The only thing I care about the price is I, I'm looking at the ratios of what is the cash flow or what is where's my where's going to be my break even. And you should always always I think factor in about of everything coming into you, I think you really got to deduct about 25% off of that. So if you think you've got a thousand dollars a month coming in gross, you're really only going to get about seven hundred and fifty dollars of that. So you need to make sure that your payment is like probably six hundred. And the only way some people can overcome that is they got to put more money down. 
But hey, this is the best way to get your money working for you. I don't know any other way than this way. Scott Lumley's on here. He's a real estate guy. He could tell you this. I don't know any better way to get your money to work for you than real estate leverage. That is the best way. Garrett, that's my philosophy, 25%, and that does include, let me be clear on that, that includes property management fees, that includes taxes, insurance, vacancies, and repairs. And of course, that is conservative, but that's that's the way I would look at a deal. I would make sure that 75% uh, of my incoming rents are the top line that I'm accounting for. So if I'm if, if the property, again, I'm, I'm getting out of the single, fa single family house, investment strategy. I only want to buy bigger things. But if I was buying a house, I would account for $750 coming in to pay my expenses. Some people are going to try to say, well, you could probably do more like 90. I don't think that's accurate. But whenever you make the decision that you're going to buy real estate, hey, Brad Elam, how you doing, friend? Whenever you make that decision that you're going to do it, I think you got to have a plan. My buddy Scott Lumley's on here. I know he's he's had a plan. That dude's bought so much real estate. James Pila. But I think most people, whenever they're buying real estate, they're always looking at best case scenarios. And I'm going to tell you, the best case scenarios of 2008, 9, 10, 11, it completely wiped me out. I didn't lose all the stuff, but I mean, I was this close to the bank coming coming and saying, "Hey, I need I need that I need that house back, buddy." Didn't happen, but I didn't account. I didn't account for worst case scenarios. I mean, I bought these houses 100% down, no money down. Uh, bought them on 30 year notes. If I would have bought them on 15 year notes and they broke even, I would come out way ahead, but I didn't do that. So I don't believe, I personally, uh, man, we are having a good time, James. Well, I know me, and I think it's important to know yourself. I know the more options that you can give me, there's more of a threat that I'm going to take the easiest option. And I need to, I need all of those options eliminated where somebody, hey, Jason Leonard, my man, I need every option eliminated for me where the bank says, dude, you got to put 20% down. We're putting this on a 15 year note because I can do that. I can force myself to do that and it's in my best interest. Where things get tricky for me is if I got a, somebody telling me, look, we can do 100% down, we can finance this over 30 years, those things don't work for me. Too often I got to reset and I don't think you should be buying anything if you can't fade the storm. You, there's going to be unexpected things. There's always going to, you'll never account for all the bad things. You'll never account for somebody moving out and um, having to fill that vacancy. And then you didn't know that they, they destroyed things. You never account for all this stuff. So I think you've got to go into every, I do not own a property with, man, that is okay. Scott Lumley who owns a lot of real estate, tons of real estate, a lot of commercial real estate. He, is, he does not own anything with over 55% loan to value. See, that's that's hard for a lot of people, but I mean, I'm sure he's built up to those things. Do you funnel all cash flow back into the debt or do you account for a payment strategy? Um, actually, the way I've been doing it, Michael, is I like to pay a little bit more than, and it's on, they're on 15 year notes. I'm paying more, but I'm also uh, building a cash reserve and uh, then I can pay it at the, I can do a lump sum reduction. But I do think you gotta have cash. Like Scott Lumley said, man, 10% cash reserve because you cannot see the future. That 10% helps you see the future that he's saying. So on the, the commercial deal that me and uh, my partner are about to start, we pretty much are in agreement. We want to keep this property forever, first off. We want this forever. So what we want to do is put it on a 15-year note, and we've worked our numbers. We feel very confident. He's a builder. We feel very certain that uh, this will. we will have plenty of cash flow on a 15-year payment, and we would like to pay it off in 12 years. So we're going to pay down on that, but we always... I think what Scott says, man, we need 10% cash reserve. I would feel more comfortable if I had enough money in reserve to pay for a year, if just in case. And I never wanted to do that. 
I never wanted to save that much money, but here's what I found. If I don't save the money for a purpose, I blow the money. Just, I just blow the money. I mean, like going on one of these trips down here is five, four or $5,000. I mean, if there's money there, you're all, for me, again, I'm very emotional. I, I get an idea and I want to go do it. That's, that's hard for a savvy investor to do because the hardest thing I battle is when there's money available, I, I, I try to justify a deal that doesn't make sense. And too often you end up into something that the only reason why you're there is because your emotions led you to get into it. Then once the logic comes to you, if you can admit you made a mistake, luckily I can't admit when I made a mistake, um, I bought something a year and a half ago and uh, I, I was under contract. I knew it was a mistake, but I gave the guy my word. I bought the project anyway and I turned around and sold it immediately and lost 3,000 bucks, which, which, you know, for me, I was tickled to, to, to do that. But I, I, I knew it was a mistake for me. Somebody else did buy it and they made it work. I just didn't know how to make the deal work. I do believe that everybody can develop like their own little way. I mean, I think you can, you can develop an intelligence for whatever it is you're doing. And whenever you develop that knowledge that it, that, uh, your intelligence in that little area, you don't need to get out of that lane. Don't think because you know how to invest in one thing very well. Uh, that, that's exactly what it was. Man, it's, hey, the best deals I've ever done. Uh, that's exactly right. But man, uh, it is so hard to walk away from deals for people like me. It's you, It's very challenging whenever you think it's a deal, but it's hard. That's why you need to have these filters in place. That's why you need to run them with very conservative, very conservative models where you've got plenty of room to, to protect yourself. Now, man, I don't need to refi. I'm gonna just try to pay everything off, Michael. But if anybody on here, it sounds like you can help them, Michael. You're more than welcome to see if anybody does need a, re a refi. But that's all I've got. I think everybody can develop their own investment strategy and I think everybody can make their strategy work. I need to eliminate any type of uh, uh, refill. I'm sorry, I do need a refill, I'm sorry. <laughs> Me and Michael Bird are about to go on a bike ride. You have to get to the point where you don't purchase based on needing money. Hmm. Hey, I'm having a rum and Diet Coke for my afternoon energy drink before we go do something. But it's vacation. Enjoy. I am, man. I'm. Uh, we're about to go. It's uh, finally, it's been sunny the last couple of days here. It's probably about 86 degrees. But hey, anybody that's on here, you should always consider going to the beach in October. I mean, I think it's the absolute best time. It's not quite as crowded. The air is not as hot. The, uh, there's not as many people here. You can enjoy things a lot more. I think tonight we're going to do a bonfire party. It's uh, my girlfriend's son's 11th birthday. So happy birthday, Nicholas. He's back there swimming. So, hey, everybody, I appreciate you getting on here. Every single Wednesday, 1 o'clock, I come to you. I do Real Estate 101 because my goal is to be the number one real estate agent providing digital content. So I appreciate you getting on here. If there's any questions or if you have anything you'd like to ask me, please feel free to message me, comment. I'll get back with you. But hey, here's my belief. I want to buy, uh, thank you for getting on here, Michael. I want to, I want to, my, hanging up here, I want you to know, I, it's taken me way too long. I'm 44 years old. I could have done this a lot sooner if I'd have been more disciplined in my thinking. So now today, I am, I am certain of this. I wanna buy real estate and I just wanna hold it. I don't wanna buy small houses. I don't wanna do that game. I, I would rather save up money. I'd rather find a partner. There's people out there, if you've got a deal, you can probably get in these deals just by bringing somebody with money a deal. I mean, don't think because you don't, anytime you find a deal, don't think you can't be a part of that. There's somebody out there that would be willing to probably put up your stake to get in the deal. So if, if you ever have a deal that you're looking at, hey, send it to me. 
I will definitely help you. I will definitely reward you somehow if you bring me a deal. There's probably other people on here. Scott Lumley would probably do the same. So if you ever have a deal, bring it to me. But I'm looking for things that are bigger, multifamily. You know, I don't, I don't want anything under, uh, I mean, I would probably go as small as a quad, four units or some kind of commercial or some kind of land is what I'm looking for. So guys, I appreciate everybody being on here. Hey, have a great day. And it really, really means a lot to me that you actually get on here and you watch me. Um, so thanks. Have a great day.